was speculated long before we got season one of House of the Dragon that the first episode of the show would either be the Great Council of 101 AC, or at the very least, it would use it as a cold opening, setting the scene for events to come. So, it was not a surprise at all when this was the case when episode one opened with the Great Council of 101 with a narration explaining what was going on as a huge fan of King Jaehaerys. I was very happy to see him in live action, if only for a brief moment, but something did catch me off guard with how they handled the Great Council of 101. And while at first it seemed more of a minor change, when you take a step back and think about it, this change has a bigger impact on the story the show is telling than you might first think. Now, for reference, the Great Council of 101 AC was called by King Jaehaerys Targaryen after the sudden death of his second son and his heir, Prince Balon, with Jaehaerys' first son, Aemon, having died a few years prior, and Balon, his second son, suddenly dying. It resulted in a mess of dozens of claims for the Iron Throne. There was no real clear heir. The council was intended to assess each of these claims and for the lords assembled to vote on whose claim they supported. Now, the Great Council of 101 is very important when it comes to the law behind the Darts of the Dragons. Specifically, it was the intent of the council to set a precedent for future claims to the Iron Throne in the event of a succession crisis. In this case, the Great Council of 101 is used as one of the key pillars of Aegon II's claim to the Iron Throne, but on a deeper level, the events of the Great Council set in place the groundwork for the Dance of the Dragons and its characters. Like any adaptation, changes are going to happen in order to bring the text to screen. I have a bit of experience when it comes to screenwriting. I used to work in TV and media for a few years and I did my master's degree dissertation on why some adaptations work and some fail. So I'm very aware of how hard it can be. The House of the Dragon was always going to be a tricky task when using a fake history book such as Fire and Blood in which there are intentionally conflicting accounts of events as your source material. Therefore, the showrunners of House of the Dragon were going to have to make some choices when it came to the narrative. However, the Great Council is not one of these cases where a direction needed to be picked. It's a part of Fire and Blood that is well documented and one of the few where the differing sources of information largely agree on the events that transpired. So it jumped out to me right away in the opening 30 seconds of the show that something quite major had been changed. That changes what the Great Council is and the whole tone of it. In the show, the choice the Great Council has to make is between Viserys Targaryen and Princess Rhaenys. Viserys, the son of Balon, the second son of Jaehaerys, and Rhaenys, the daughter of Aemon, the first son of Jaehaerys. Now, this is very different from the books, where the choice is between Viserys and Laenor Valarian, the son of Princess Rhaenys and Corlys Valarian. In the books, by the time of the Great Council of 101, Princess Rhaenys' claim to the Iron Throne had already been set aside after the death of her father, Prince Aemon, in favour of her uncle and Jaehaerys' second son, Prince Balon. So, after Balon's own death, while there were some pushing for Rhaenys' claim to be acknowledged, the reality of the situation is, the choice was always going to be between Viserys and Laenor on account of their gender. This changes the dynamic of the Great Council in a few ways. In the book, the choice of Viserys was meant to set a precedent that the Iron Throne could not pass to a woman or through a woman to her son. That's why Viserys was chosen over Laenor, being able to trace his lineage to Jaehaerys via the male line. While in the book, Rhaenys and Corlys are clearly angered at her passing over. They are also more so angered by the passing over of Laenor, who they feel had a much stronger claim given he's male. It changes the context of the actions of Corlys in the first season a lot, with him seemingly more bitter about his wife's passing over in the show, rather than his own son's claim to the throne, with Laenor's claim never really even being addressed that much. This all changes Rhaenys' character greatly as well. Don't get me wrong, in the book she's clearly upset and angry she was passed over for Balon, that Laenor was passed over for Viserys, but is not as key and central to her character as it is in House of the Dragon, where this issue is seemingly at the heart of who Rhaenys is, how she approaches and sees the world in House of the Dragon. It also makes her connection to Rhaenyra and her claim make more sense. She would not just be fighting for the rights of her grandsons or her son, but also Rhaenyra, a woman who stands to be passed over just like she was. In a way, doing this indeed adds more depth to Rhaenys as a character, which is generally needed when adapting Fire and Blood to screen, albeit changing the political landscape to a more simplified version in the show. But other than wanting to expand Rhaenys' character, there is, in my view, 
two key other reasons as to why the showrunners may have actively made this change to the Great Council. It's not only simplifies the setup of the show by streamlining the backstories of the characters, but at the same time bring the gender issue to the forefront which was always going to be a big part of the show, and especially when it comes to Rhaenyra's story. Gender issue is such a huge part of why the Dance of the Dragon happens in the first place. For example, if Rhaenyra was born male, none of the events of the show would transpire. If her brother had survived the first episode, he would be the heir, and none of this would ever happen. It's the fact of her gender, and Aegon II being Viserys' eldest male child, that plays such a huge part in both claims to the throne and why the ruling of the Great Council of 101 is so important for both the characters Rhaenyra and Aegon and their claims. So having Rhaenys be passed over sets up the gender issue in a much more obvious way than if the show had followed the book and used Laenor instead. I think it would have been more confusing for casual audiences include both Rhaenys getting passed over for Balon before Laenor was even born and Laenor being passed over at the Great Council. So in this case, I can kind of see why they streamlined it even if I'm not particularly a big fan of it. In my view, the change also does help highlight how, without a clear succession law, an event like the Dance of the Dragons was inevitable at some point. While traditionally the eldest male child inherits the Iron Throne, much like the Lordships in Westeros, in the case of House Targaryen and the Iron Throne, there does not seem to be any clear-cut, codified law that states how succession is supposed to work. What there is, however, is the precedent set over generations. For example, there are other cases in Targaryen history where a woman or an elder sister was passed over for a younger brother. Specifically, the case of Reyna Targaryen, who was passed over in favour of Jaehaerys. We even have Jaehaerys then naming his own eldest son Aemon as his heir over his elder daughter Daenerys. So we have that precedent, but then also the precedent that the Great Council itself was supposed to be setting in the first place. But precedent is not codified law. So the question you need to ask yourself, what holds more weight? Centuries of tradition and precedent, alongside the inheritance practices of nearly every other house in the Seven Kingdoms, or the power of a king to name his heir, where a king's word is effectively law. The two ideologies conflict, that is at heart the central question in the Darts of the Dragons, and in my opinion, one that has no clear answer, as I feel both Rhaenyra and Aegon have valid claims and arguments to some extent. But here is what is so funny about the show choosing to change the Great Council of 101 for it to be between Viserys and Rhaenys. In the show's timeline, the idea of Viserys naming Rhaenyra as his heir, despite the birth of Aegon, goes against the very precedent set by the Great Council that put Viserys on the throne in the first place. In the end, the way the show's Great Council worked out adds more depth to Princess Rhaenys as a character, brings the gender issue to the forefront, but at the same time, sacrificing the political nuance that I think makes the book's version slightly more interesting. For me, the only other really big issue is if they ever do go back and cover the late era of Jaehaerys' reign on TV, Changing how the Great Council works drastically changed the timeline and direction of the story, which could cause some issues. Changing the Great Council if you wish to cover that era is kind of a bit of a reverse butterfly effect, where events that happened in the past are going to have to change to accommodate what the show went with. But I'm sure they would figure out some way to make it work. Perhaps, who knows, maybe they could even wreck on it.